In this video, we are going to start creating some behavior-driven design unit tests by starting with our requirements document that we came up with in a previous video. We start with our scenario. As a user, I want features so that I can get benefit. And now we have elaborated this into several examples. So we'll see, uh, given a feed of plant data is available, when I search for Redbud, then I should receive at least one result with these attributes. Uh, similar, given a feed of plant data is available, when I search for Quarkus, then I should receive one of these. And then finally, an edge case, given a feed of plant data is available, when I search for just garbage, then I should receive zero results. So this is the framework for the test we are about to write. A quick lay of the land. I have already created an interface called iPlantDAO. Very simple, very straightforward. It has a method called uh, search, which accepts a string search term and returns a collection of plants. Now this is an interface, so all we have is the method signature, not a class that actually implements this method. And that's okay, because with test first design, we don't need to write the test, we don't need to write the class first. We write the test first and the class later. All we really need is an interface that tells us what methods we are going to call, but we don't necessarily need to know how those methods are working inside. Okay. Underneath this, you see we have a couple of packages here that look very similar. One is edu.uc.jonesbr.plantplaces, and it has a notation here, Android test. The other one has a notation which is called test. This is the directory that these packages actually live in. Even though they look the same, they live in two different folders. Sorry, folders. They live in two different folders. The difference here is test is for just generic unit tests that are essentially POJOs, plain old Java objects, don't know anything about Android specifically. Where the Android test directory knows about the Android environment. It knows what an activity is, it knows what a context is, and so on and so forth. So the difference in these two folders is just, do you want a plain unit test, or do you want a unit test that's actually looking at the Android components itself? So with that, let's go ahead and start our uh, test, which we're going to put here in this example unit test uh, I'm sorry, in this uh, test directory. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to say new Java class, and this one will simply call plant DAO test. Uh, in JUnit3 syntax, we had to include that word test in a, in a test class name. We no longer have to, but traditionally a lot of people, including me, still do. Also in an older version of, uh, of JUnit, we had to extend a specific superclass, but not anymore. We do everything with annotation, uh, so we can just leave the super class blank. And I choose OK. OK, uh, sure, go ahead and add to Git. And now let's start thinking about what our test should look like. Let's start by getting some inspiration from our very first example here. So when I search for Redbud, I should, at least, I should receive at least one result with these attributes. OK, so uh, let's say public void. Now we'll start with the name of the method that we're testing, which is in here in our plan, uh, it's uh, search. Okay, easy enough. So public void search, and then uh, when search for red bud, receive one red bud. Uh, that seems really wordy, doesn't it? That's okay, that's what we wanna do. So the name of the method that we're, that we're testing, an underscore, and then the condition that we're testing uh, follows that like so. So it's kind of wordy, but the reason why we do that is if a unit test fails, it's very obvious what the exact failure was. Now I'll annotate this with that test, which is from uh, JUnit. You see it imported that automatically for me. And um, now I'm going to say, uh, let's see, given a feed of plant data is available. So we'll just say given plant data are available. Why did I use R not is? Because data is actually plural. Notice I'm calling a method before I actually have the method. That's okay. Uh, when I search for Redbud, okay. So when search for Redbud, okay. And finally, whoops, just one moment. Finally, uh, then I should receive at least one result with Circus Canadensis. Then receive result with Circus Canadensis, which is the Latin name for red bud. As a matter of fact, I had to change the method name to be more specific there and say receive one Circus Canadensis. Okay, great. So now we're off to a good start. 
what I'm going to do is uh, in in Android Studio or IntelliJ, I'm going to I'm going to put my cursor on each of these methods. Alt Enter and say Create Method. So there we go. We're creating the method that we haven't called yet. Okay. When search for Redbud, Alt Enter. Oh, let's go ahead and confirm our changes below. There we go. Now when search for Redbud, Alt Enter, Create Method. Do you see where it put the Win method? You see it started with the then, then it put the when above the then, and then it's going to put the given above the when, which is why I'm creating these in reverse order, because the default behavior is just to create a method underneath the method that we're currently in. So starting from the then, the when, to the given, it creates it so that I see it in this order, given, when, then, like so. Okay, let's start with given plant data are available. Well, we're going to get that from the class that implements iPlantDAO. So let me make a an attribute private I plant DAO plant DAO. Okay, whoops, like so. Okay, alt enter to import, like so. Good. Now given plant data are available. For this, we're just going to uh, instantiate our DAO class. Okay. So plant DAO equals new plant DAO stub. And that's going to redline because the class does not yet exist, but that's okay. Remember, we're doing behavior-driven design, which is essentially a an enhancement of test-driven design. So we're writing the test before we write the code. Now with the given complete, let's go to the win. Win search for redbud, this one's easy. Plant DAO dot search redbud. Now take a look at that. You see it's allowing me to invoke this method without actually having a class. There again, another good advantage of using interfaces. Then receive result with Circus Canadensis. Okay, so the search method from plant DAO is going to return something, and let's see what it's going to return. It's going to return a list of plant DTOs. So what we can do in uh, Android Studio IntelliJ is Control Alt F with my cursor on that method, and that will uh, that will essentially take what the return value from that method and create a field out of it. So we can just call this plants, like so. And look what it did for me on line 17. This did not exist before. It's declaring an attribute called plants of type list with a generic identifier of plant DTO. Okay, good. So now the then uh, receive result with Circus Canadensis, here we can do a for each loop, and we can say, okay, for plant DTO plant in the collection uh, plants, okay, and we'll tighten this up a little bit, okay, uh, so we're going to iterate over every plant result that we've received back, so iterate over results, okay, let's start by assuming that we don't have a plant that meets the given criteria, so uh, we'll say boolean, Redbud found, or let's say Circus found, Circus Canadensis found equals false. So assume it's not found. After the for loop, let's assert true Circus Canadensis found. Okay, and Alt Enter, a little bit of magic here. There we go. So what we're saying is, let's assume we haven't found one. In the for loop, we're going to find out if we found one or not. And then finally, we're going to assert whether we found one or not. So within the for loop now, we have to make a decision. Does this plant qualify? Okay. Well, to know that, we have to say if plant.getGenus, okay, and we'll say, uh, we could say contains or equals. I'll go ahead and say contains, and then we'll say Circus and plant.getSpecies. And then we'll say contains, and we'll say canadensis. So we could debate about doing an exact equals or a case match, all that. We'll just use contains for the for the moment. Then we'll say circus canadensis found equals true. And our requirement was only to get one of these. So we'll say circus canadensis found equals true, and then we'll break, like so. Okay, and save. Now, obviously, I can't run this just yet because guess what? I don't have a plant DAO stub. And I do want to make that, but I also want to finish up the other given when then scenarios that we have. But on the same note, I want to be aware of your time, your time watching this video. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video for just a moment and I'm going to complete the other given when then examples that I have in the requirements document. I'll show those to you and then we'll take a look at the plant DAO stub. A quick checkpoint of where I am here, you see I've made two more test methods that I need to annotate with the at test annotation to say that these should apply to unit testing. And notice one nice thing about given when then is we can reuse methods which makes it very quick to put together new unit tests. So the given stays the same. All I need now is a new when for when search for Quarkus and then receive two oaks, when search for garbage and then receive nothing. I'll pause the video and I'll continue these tests. I've completed now uh, both of the methods and everything that they call as well. So when search for Quarkus, receive two oaks. You see we're reusing that first method. When search for two oaks is new and then receive, or when search for Quarkus is new, then receive two oaks is also new. When search for Quarkus is simple, just like Redbud, but we're searching for Quarkus. Quarkus is the genus that describes all oaks, so Quarkus and oak go hand in hand. Then receive two oaks, a slightly more complicated test than our Redbud test. We're simply looking for Quarkus as the genus and Alba as the, uh, as the species or Rover as the species. We can also both go by common name, but in naming plants, the scientific name tends to be a bit more reliable because it's less likely to have multiple words that describe the same thing. Now, test annotation above uh, when search for garbage received nothing. Again, we're reusing the given. The when part, I simply put in that exact string that we saw in our requirements document, which we wanted to look just like our requirements document. And then I'm asserting based on the size of the plant collection that came back. So a total of four tests. And now our next step is to actually implement the interface into a class and run these tests until they execute. Let's go ahead and wrap up this video as part one. We'll do the implementation of this plant DAO stub in our next video. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.